Abba did the impossible with his album, you know, the announcement alone, and with their two new songs. But what about the music video for I Still Have Faith In You and the upcoming concerts in London? Today I want to discuss how it all brought them back in really more than one way and how they even recorded more in the studio than the Voyage album. Hey hey! So, first of all I want to thank all those many people who watched my last video where I talked all about ABBA's upcoming Voyage album, which is less than four weeks away now. And I want to say hi to each and every one who newly subscribed to my channel. I said it before, I never asked for it, but I am so happy that you are here. Thank you so much! Now, today I'd like to talk all about ABBA's music video for their new song I Still Have Faith In You and the Voyage concerts in London. I'm trying to find out how it's going to work, but also what it really means. So let's start with the music video. Overall, I really love it. It will always be connected to that unforgettable Thursday evening when it premiered really out of nowhere. So there are a lot of feelings with it and some big sentimental, nostalgic emotions already. And speaking of which, of course the video is full of nostalgia. We see photos of the other members from throughout the years, video clips, most of it in black and white and in slow motion for the first part, then with the song's change in tempo, the color comes in and the rhythm of the editing increases. ABBA's classic music videos were really a cinematic art form in their own way and so important for their visual appearance. I talked more about it in another video of mine. So I always wondered how will their new music video match the classic legacy? Well, by exactly going back to it. So we do see moments from these classic films, it's all very familiar, but of course there is something different about it too. Because every now and then there is a twist and we see moments we have never seen before. These must be outtakes from the original film reels and we know that they've been working on restoring the classic videos in 4K high definition, so it was probably all a very complimentary process where they must have found this footage and perhaps got the idea of using it for the new video. We got outtakes from three of the four clips from their 1975 album ABBA. One for their later single Gimme 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 A Man After Midnight and there is even some unseen footage from ABBA the movie as well. Most of the photos and video snippets are also framed like photos and not in full frame, so it's like going through a photo book, but with all its sentimentalities, to me the entire video really is as elegant as ever. It also reminded me of the visual presentation of their 1982 compilation album The Singles, The First Ten Years, so it's like a perfect connection to what we thought was the end. Also, that title finally makes sense, it was their first ten years. And I also had to think about Benny's video for his piano version of Thank You For The Music from 2017 and his appearance at BBC's The One Show. It was all so nostalgic, but really beautifully done. And that's what we have here. And then come Abba's avatars in motion on stage as they looked back in the 70s singing I Still Have Faith In You. To be honest, it is quite surreal and this is certainly now and then combined. I'll say this very carefully, I wasn't too overwhelmed when I first saw them. But I really want to stress that it's always easy to be negative about something, but it is so important to put a perspective on everything. First of all, do they look real? No. Do they look like some form of animation? Sure, because that's what they are. And they never talked about the avatars to be looking real, but they always said something in the vein that it will be strange and surreal indeed. And secondly, they've been working hard on this project and it has been in the making for years. So it's just too easy to simply dismiss really anything. Sure, you can always like something or not, but express it gracefully and with respect. So I'll say I am extremely excited and looking forward to the avatars in concert. It is no secret that they continue to work and are still working on the refinement of the avatars. And when I look at the official photograph of the four, I am absolutely thrilled and blown away. This looks so damn good. They changed their hairstyle, especially on Bjorn and Benny, which really looks awesome, so it's possible they will change their costumes and styles halfway through the concerts or several times. But I think it's also a difference to see the avatars in photographs or eventually live on stage from a distance in a room than to see them projected as a video on our screens. It's also noticeable that their presence is quite limited in the music video. Of course, that has also to do with them being the big revelation towards the end of the song, but it's interesting that we don't even have a close-up shot of Agneta. 
One of my favorite scenes is this moment between Frida and Benny. Remember, they must have done this in real life for the motion capture filming, so it's very beautiful to see. Now, speaking of the real ABBA members, I had a long-time dream and secret desire for this new music video. And that was to have a cameo, a brief appearance of Agneta, Björn, Benny and Frida together as they are today. This would have been just perfectly consistent and coherent with the song itself that they do have faith in themselves, in the music, but also in their avatars. So I imagined for the very end of the video that the camera would have moved back from the stage and revealed all four members watching their avatars, even if we only saw them from behind. What I think to see in the video itself is, however, a brief moment at the very end in the final close-up shot of Frida. She sings the final lines and to me it always looked like she is almost transforming into real Frida from today. At least there are some very fine facial shapes of her. It could as well simply have to do with the technique itself, but it was one of those surreal moments. And this technique brings us to the Voyage concerts starting in May 2022. These concerts will truly be like real ABBA concerts from today and you will know what I mean by that. Many will say a true live concert is the presence of the artist and the interaction with its audience. And that is absolutely right. But this is as much a true concert as it possibly can get with two factors, ABBA and 2022. Would I love to see them actually performing live in concert? 100%. The only plausible solution for this would be a one-off concert in a room with no audience being recorded and broadcast to everyone worldwide. That's the only possibility where each and every one would be happy. Yes, I'd love to see it. Would I like to see them performing live in concert day after day, doing something they just don't want to do? Absolutely not. They are in their 70s and they haven't done anything like that for 40 years. So let's focus not on what we won't get, but what we will be getting because it's extremely intriguing and as complex as it could possibly get. And they worked extraordinarily hard. It's their brand new concert tour. It's called Voyage, like the album. And because it is so complex, they built their very own arena to stay permanently in London, at least for a while. The arena is actually called the ABBA Arena, and this is where the show is happening. That show is put together by Benny's son Ludwig Andersson as producer, but also by Svana Gisla, whom we have seen in the promo video for the project, the choreographer Wayne McGregor, Bailey Walsh and Johan Renk, who actually directed David Bowie's videos for Blackstar and Lazarus. The visual effects team is none other than Industrial Light and Magic, founded by George Lucas for his Star Wars movies, and we know that Ludwig Andersson is quite a fan of those films, so there sure was another dream come true. It seems like Simon Fuller is no longer involved in this project, simply because it has evolved into something different. It was, as Björn often said during this long waiting time, a work in progress. It's, it's a work in progress and it's, it's kind of taking its shape right now. But Simon Fuller was the initiative with whom it all started five years ago when ABBA announced that they are back together working on a new project. As Björn said, it was suggested to them originally as holograms, but they wanted something different, something better. Bailey Walsh said, the fact that we couldn't do a hologram made us push harder to make the show much better. It's much more varied, it's incredibly generous, every song is a different picture, the lighting is going to be extraordinary, the real world and the digital world will melt together, you will think ABBA is there, it's about that suspension of disbelief. So where exactly is ABBA if we only think they are there? Well, they are there, but they're not. To not complicate things even more, all four ABBA members perform the songs, the setlist and narration, the entire concert show in their home country in Sweden, more specifically in a room at the Filmhuset in Stockholm. They were recorded by 160 cameras, which captured their movements, gestures and basically their entire human beings, so that those recordings can be transferred into their younger selves, into ABBA's avatars. ABBA's soul is in those avatars, as they told us. And they did these recordings over the course of five weeks every day. The whole project almost fell apart because Björn and Benny actually had to shave their beards. Well, they did in the end, and it now explains why Benny was seen with a shaved beard in the spring of 2020 for a memorial concert for the late great Josephine Nielsen. Fans even speculated back then that he must be getting in shape for the ABBA comeback. Well, he kind of did. 
The funniest thing, however, with this beard story is something that Björn once said years ago. The likelihood of me shaving off my beard is as far away as the reunion of Anna. Well, now he got two for the price of one. The most curious thing is that this quote was actually published on September the 2nd, 2009. Twelve years later, exactly to the date, ABBA introduced us to Voyage. How strange is that? Anyway, back to our avatars. So ABBA created them with hard work and they did actually film more songs during the motion capture recordings in Stockholm so that they will have the ability to make changes along the way, swap some songs here and there and introduce new ones. And they also spent time capturing all of the usual elements that make up a more traditional live performance and they said that there will be lots of hidden surprises. That sounds just so exciting and I'm sure we are in for a real treat and more than one. During the live concerts, it seems that four people will be there acting like ABBA, but I guess they are hidden away in some room, they wouldn't be on stage and their movements will be reflected as ABBA's avatars onto the stage. Agneta in her interview said that those people would be on stage, but I'm not sure if that makes much sense. She did confess that even they don't exactly understand the technology and all those bits and pieces of information that are out there can indeed sound confusing and sometimes like empty words, but it only shows just how complex it all really is. And in the end, I think we will never quite know how it will work, nor are we supposed to. As I quoted before, it's about the suspension of disbelief. And Ludwig found the perfect words for it. However technically advanced these avatars are, this can never only be about technology. Like all music, you need to keep that open highway into your soul. We need to work on that emotion. It needs to always be about the audience feeling something. We're just trying to enhance that feeling and crank it up to 11 with everything we have at our disposal. That sounds really promising and he famously describes the show as a magical ABBA space circus church, a concert on steroids. I feel that ABBA Voyage is actually going to be more than just ordinary concerts or an approximation of what a concert would be. It sounds like a truly unique entertainment experience. And we only discussed the visual aspects of it, but what about the music? Well, first of all, there will be a live band which was put together by James Wrighton, who works closely together with Björn and Benny. At one point, they even did an impromptu performance of Eagle with Benny on synthesizers and piano that went for over 30 minutes simply because apparently it was so much fun that they just couldn't stop. The band consists of 10 players, but only one of them has been revealed so far. It is Little Boots for keyboards, but she will also provide backing vocals. So what about ABBA's vocals? I said in the beginning that the concerts will truly be like real ABBA concerts from today, and I really mean it. The concerts will sound like ABBA today, they will be like ABBA today, because they are ABBA from today. ABBA actually re-recorded their vocals for their classic songs that will be featured in the Voyage shows. Again, ABBA re-recorded their classic songs. I don't know why this isn't making any bigger headlines, but I think it is absolutely mind-blowing. And we don't have too many information on it so far, only that Björn mentioned it in an interview for BBC a few weeks ago in context with the music for the live shows. He said that some of the songs may sound different because Agneta and Frida now sing one tone lower, but that they laughed all the time during rehearsals. On the latest ABBA Q&A on Twitter, the question was asked if the vocals are original studio recordings or even re-recordings, but the answer is somewhat ambiguous. It only says that the vocals are original band recordings. Perhaps it is a mixture of old and new. I'm sure we will learn more about Voyage in the coming weeks and months, but I hope you got the gist of it so far. Let's summarize how hard ABBA actually worked on this entire project and I have nothing but utter respect for these four. First of all, the decision alone to get back together again. That's not just a quick decision. Step two, writing new songs. And that's not done in a day or two, it can take many weeks and we're only talking about one or two songs. They wrote and recorded 10 songs for an entire album and even a few more that were ditched. Then they had to record the instrumental backing tracks for those songs get the band together, record it all in secrecy. The same goes for those complex vocal recordings and arrangements that have to be rehearsed and recorded for all those 10 and more songs. Step 5. Producing the songs and putting them together for an actual album. And this is only the work on their new album. 
In between, they re-recorded vocals for their classic songs that will appear in the concerts, and they even got into leotards and helmets to film performances for the concerts for over five weeks. Again, these people are in their 70s, and they've been working hard for over five years to make all of this happen. In a fairly recent interview, Ludwig said this. ABBA themselves want to do it exactly like this. They think this is the best way they can connect with their fans, better in fact than if they had actually been there in the flesh. And I respect that and greet it with all my heart. ABBA always knew what they're doing. And by the way, we've waited for decades for a new ABBA photograph, and this is what we get? That's exactly why I love it so much. They just don't take themselves too seriously, and I love that. Now I want to know from you. What are your thoughts of ABBA's music video for I Still Have Faith In You, the Voyage show experience, and please let me know if you have tickets for ABBA's new concerts. I would love to be there for the actual opening, but unfortunately I wasn't lucky enough, so I don't have any tickets yet. Again, thank you for watching my video, especially if you're still here with me, and if you want more Voyage, you can find all my videos in this playlist here. Alright, until then, hey do!